All right, well, I just want to welcome you to Stronger Together. This is a series of, uh, I guess, town halls that we'll have throughout the year uh, that we'll have to deal with either something new that's happening or, or somebody who needs to communicate information and we'll get feedback. These will be um, on occasion throughout, um, well, all the years that, that we go through this because this is the theme for what we're trying to build here. So. This is the first one. It's Meet the Executive Director. This was originally given at uh, the uh, evening event that we did on October 29th, um, but thought I would put it online for all of you to uh, get an opportunity to, to listen to what I had to say in a shorter version anyways. And so we'll go through this step by step. And if you have questions, we'll have directions on how you can uh, manage getting that information to me at the end of this. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the first thing that I like to do is do a little bit about um, me so you know who I am if you haven't had a chance to hear me speak yet. I uh, really run my life based on, on three primary focuses outside of my spiritual life. And that is one of husband, father, and teacher, uh, really in that order. Um, so I've been married for 27 years. I have two children. Um, and you know everything all of my success is predicated on this relationships that I've had especially the one with my wife um, it made me the father I am and it certainly made me the teacher I am so those are important to me uh, short testimony I was uh, I came to Christ when I was uh, in a college youth group at Calvary Assembly in Winter Park um, in a college uh, prior to college anyways it was you know there was lots of rough years there but the idea was that uh, I knew after I had given my life to Christ that uh, I was never the same. So I was new in that and remain so today. I have a degree, a, a primary or a bachelor's degree in history because I wanted to teach history. Um, I also have a graduate degree or a master's degree in uh, leadership and educational technology. And those are, uh, those are my professional credentials anyways. Uh, my wife and I, like I said, we've been married for 27 years, two great kids, a boy and a girl. Uh, the boy is in law school uh, at William & Mary in Virginia. My daughter is graduating Sanford University this year. In fact, they both graduate him from law school and her from uh, Sanford uh, in the spring. So, uh, give you a short life story. I don't want to overdo it, but I uh, got married when I was 22 years old. Uh, my wife was already committed to the Navy as a nurse, and so she got out of nursing school and she went straight to officer school came back we packed a big u-haul and we moved to washington dc and then from there we moved a few other places and some great places doing the military life for the next 18 years we lived in places like puerto rico and we lived in japan and and uh, north carolina so we had a great life in the military we're big fans of military life and and so she's been retired now since 2010 moved back to orlando at that point uh, i went to work at the master's academy where my children went to school and then um, after that, became an administrator at Orange Road Christian School for three years, and then I ended up here at Holy Cross. Give you a short um, idea of what I believe in school, and this is something I've always believed in school, and that it's all it's all preparatory, right? Like I used to tell my kids all the time, this is your job. You're preparing for what comes after, um, and no matter if you're in preschool or elementary school, you're always preparing for the next step. So that's what we plan to do here at Holy Cross is we're preparing the students for what comes next. I also believe all students can succeed. That is, um, without doubt, um, one of the primary things that I believe is true about students. Uh, is if we're doing our jobs right, they can all succeed. Uh, we need your help in partnering with us to do that, but all students can succeed. They, what success looks like is different for every student. That's why you know, I, I believe in this so strongly. I also don't believe that all students need to go to college. Um, we want them to go to college. We know what the benefits of them going to college are, but some of them aren't really interested in it or don't want to do it. They want to go into the military or they want to work with their hands doing something. There are all kinds of options out there today. The world's a different place and so I don't hang my hat on having to have you know every student go off to, to university. That's just not a healthy way to, to view education or preparation. Um, not all students are created equal. We have some who are fantastic athletes and some who are hugely academic and some who are great artists and and musicians and so they're all different and that's the beauty of 
of this is that they're all different and they're not created equal in all ways. So we want to make sure that we honor that and all that we uh, we do and we teach. So I want you to keep that in mind as well as we go through this. Um, why I came here? Um, I really think that I was brought here or called here in order to set the vision and build the future of HCLA. I, I am a builder. I love to build things. And this is one thing that you know I think that that I do well, and it's in my skill set. So I, I do enjoy building, and will continue to to try and build uh, HCLA into the into the school that God would have it, not that I would have it. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. But I love hard work. I love getting dirty. I love getting my hands on things. You know, I love all that stuff. So um, completing tasks brings me a tremendous amount of joy. So I I. I do have the skill set to build stuff, so I'm going to try my hardest to do exactly that here and uh, set the vision and future of HCLA. Um, ultimately, though, my job in Christian education is to build the kingdom or to impact the kingdom. That's really what I'm I'm here for is, uh, as a Christian educator. Uh, that is my plan is the kids leave here with some sense of um, what their purpose is and what they can contribute um, you know, in the community and outside of here. Um, as they're being prepared for whatever next steps they have. So I'll run over a series of um, near-term uh, things that we're doing. This is this year that I'm here. We've done a lot so far, but um, when I came here, I knew the first thing we need to do is clean and organize facilities. It was time for it to get a good once over, knock down some outbuildings at the high school, um, get rid of some things at the lower school, just make sure that we beautified the um, the campuses so they looked great and uh, we could build for the future so we've done a lot of that we've got a lot more to do we're gonna hire our own landscaping guy who's gonna come and be a full-time employee here and and help to beautify the campuses and, and keep track of all the, the things that need to be done we want to increase our market presence and we want to increase our exposure to the community so we're gonna do a lot of marketing stuff that's different uh, we're gonna become more efficiency in the process and protocol uh, that is involved in running a school that is uh, with a, a particular focus on safety. Uh, we are going to do um, strategic planning at the second half of the year with the directors and, and figure out sort of what uh, we have uh, to do for the future growth of the school. And then we've got to manage the growth of the school. That's another important one. So let's talk a little bit about midterm stuff. Um, that's the two to three year period that we can uh, focus on. I think the number one thing that we need to focus on the, the year two to three is making sure our facilities are safe. Um, Rekeying doors, putting fob um, uh, keys on everything so everybody's able to get in and out and the doors lock tightly and, and nobody can get in that doesn't have the, the entry fob. Those are really important. We want to put more cameras around so we know who's coming and who's going, so that's really important for safety reasons. Um, we want to train our employees better um, and screen for employees better. That's something we can also do to make the campuses safer. Um, we want to make sure our employees recognize things that aren't right, you know, like anything from you know um, sexual assault or things like that. Um, to strangers in and around the area so we got to train them to do that so that's important um, we could talk more about on-campus security as time goes on do we need um, police officers or security guards or hired um, people to come on campus and help us with some of those things that's a discussion definitely for on um, a later time and we'll have to discuss that Training students to be better at recognizing when things aren't right. That's something that not a lot of schools do well. Um, we want to be a leader in making sure our students are trained to recognize danger and to recognize things that just aren't right. And um, that training will carry with them throughout their years in college and in their work life as well. So I think it's a great preparatory tool um, for students to have. So also looking at some growth stuff for the midterm years two and three, <clears throat> what I put here is I put a um, current enrollment on the first three lines, elementary, middle, and high school for 2019. So that gives us a, a good understanding about how many students, around 300 students altogether in those grades. This does not include our, our um, preschool numbers. 
Um, but what I'm really interested in focusing on are the high school numbers, and the reason for that is not because I prefer high school over elementary school. It's because we want all of our students to end up in high school. So we want to build a, the best possible high school that we can. And uh, the 2019-2020 numbers are at 48, which is a good number in a growing high school. But next year, if we just add two per class to the current numbers we already have, we'll have 71 high school students next year. So that's a big increase in the number of students that we'll have next year. And then after that, it jumps up. If we only add two the year after that to each class, we get 93. And then two to the class after that, we'll be over 100 students in three years. Um, and that changes everything. That changes everything from your sports program to your fine arts to um, what you have to do with your facilities. I mean, it's really important to understand that in three years, we could be looking at a school at a minimum with 100 students, but it could be as many as 120 or 130 students if things continue to grow in this area like they have been. So um, please keep in mind those of you who are interested in seeing a high school develop with lots of sports, and that's what we're shooting for, and that's what's happening um, with the projected growth of the school moving forward. So how do we get there? How do we do this? How do we continue the growth pattern as we move forward? Um, we're going to do it in a few different sections, and I'll explain each one of these briefly when I get to it. But the first thing we do is build Christian character. Um, we focus on facilities, academics, athletics, and fine arts. Before we get started on, on those areas that I'll explain, we've got to talk about some of the barriers. This doesn't mean that all this will go as, according to plan, right? There are things that could happen to, to derail us a little bit. The, the economy could kind of not do so great. It's been really great lately, but it could change, so we want to keep that in mind. If it does change, it may slow things down. Um, what can really slow things down is mediocre buy-in from students and from family. That means people who just don't want to be here um, for one reason or another. Maybe it was convenient for them to be here, but they're not bought in. And if you're not bought in, we can't, can't grow it and we can't build it. This us versus them mentality between the elementary and, and upper school, that's got to not happen because we're all one school. We just happen to be on two campuses. Any short-term enrollments that occur could, uh, if we're viewed as a, a temporary stop, to another school that's problematic because then you're really not bought in. It goes back up under up the mediocre buy-in. Um, the idea that we need to figure out with team over family means that you know most schools and businesses are, they're not family. You know, we love to see family because it feels comfortable and we like to hold it close. But we're we're really not a family. We're really a team. You know, and I liken this to you know putting you know the New York Yankees want to win. World Series. They don't, so they're not going to let just anybody play at shortstop or get up the bat just because they're, you know, the family, a family friend or they're in the family. You know, like the pitchers, Uncle Tommy isn't going to come in and pitch for the New York Yankees because they're going to lose the game because Uncle Tommy is not a pitcher or a baseball player. And so he's part of family, but he's not the team. So we want to emphasize team over family. That's important. Um, we don't do dick dictatorships in the school. I'm not a dictator. I don't tell everybody what to do and it just happens. We work together. That's called a partnership. Moving forward, we'll have so much partnership discussion and what we're doing um, to help one another that you'll get tired of me he tired of hearing me say it, but we've got to say it because partnerships are key to school success and that's the way we're going to look at the future of the school as a partnership. Parents don't come in and dictate what happens in the school um, I don't go to you and dictate everything that's going to happen without getting buy-in. It's just not going to work if, if that happens. It'll fall apart. All right, so let's start talking about some of these key areas. First one's building Christian character. We want to build Christian character within the student body of the school at all levels through service, um, purpose. You know, they're all different. You know, we want to leverage the relationships we have within the church or the cross network. I think that's really important. We want to welcome diversity in the school. We don't want this school to just be um, certain kids with certain income levels. We want kids from all areas, even foreign students, to come to this school and make it a diverse place that looks more like the communities in which we live. And then, um, in, in so far as building Christian character is concerned, I think we do it with the help of a campus director of spiritual life, somebody who can come in here and help us um, counsel students, Christian counseling of students who can help um, create great chapels and 
get people on campus who can really pour into the students. That person needs to be around all the time, and I think that that's a, a key component of a successful school as well as having somebody come in who can do that. All right, so we talked about uh, the facilities for a little bit. There are ways in which to do this. There are really inexpensive ways to improve facilities and really expensive ways we'll talk about both. Inexpensive is like painting and landscaping and cleaning things up. That's, that's an expensive facility stuff. Um, having our students and families help is great because then we save money and we get some buy-in from the families and we get to spend time together and work as a team and it's really a fantastic thing. We've done a couple of, uh, of work days here and they were great. Um, we're constantly developing. We don't slow down. We're going to develop this thing. We're going to keep moving forward. We're going to always have a, a project going and a plan going because um, that's what I like to do. I like to keep it moving forward. Um, we keep that momentum going and that doesn't end ever. We always do that. Uh, building efficiencies, making sure that um, the, the campuses are efficient, that we're um, paying really close attention to our resources and being good stewards of those resources and not wasteful. Um, that's super important too. And then creating an actual campus. And, uh, and I say that and you say, well, there's a campus already. Well, it is a campus in, in, in physical form, but it needs to, uh, I'm talking about a campus a realized campus in our minds and what it looks like um, when it's finished and that means a place where kids like to be where they're happy to go to and they want to stay and that's the kind of place we're trying to, to create here and so we have to have an end game in mind for that um, so that's a, the, the an overview of the sort of facility piece academics we're always striving to hire the best people so we want to hire the best teachers the best principals the best everything we want, to in, we want to kind of develop our internal talent for leadership roles because that's really important to get people from inside who are bought in, who want to be here, who want to create the best possible place. And that way you always have a, a deep bench of people who can help when other people move away or something happens in their life to take them away from here. Um, we'll use best practices and be innovative in our curriculum at all levels from preschool all the way up to, to the high school. Um, also. Uh, that focus on innovation and preparation are going to be things that you hear me say all the time. Um, you know, we have a new a website launching that uh, Sue Stark has been working so hard on, and, and we're very proud of it. And you've, you're already there and seeing it right now. But you know, you know, it's important that things like that continue to move forward. And this website will, of course, launch into another website at some point in the future. And we always want to be updating and keeping up to speed with uh, the trends but also the mainstays within education as well. This is just a web uh, screenshot of the website um, that you're already on. And if you have feedback, you can tell us through email or whatever and be nice about it because we like nice people and, and that would be nice if you would give us some feedback so we can improve it. Um, so we'll talk about athletics because athletics is a big part of a growing um, environment, school environment. So. I've tasked our athletic director with making sure that we're in the FHSAA within two years. That means that we qualify for it, we start playing teams um, within the FHSAA, which is every high school, legitimate high school in the state that we'd have access to play if we wanted to. Um, we gotta, in order to do that, we gotta get rid of some of the things that are holding our athletic director back from developing this, and that's upward and some leagues really need to be handed over to somebody else. We don't want them to go away. We want to keep them because they feed our sports programs, but we do want somebody to take them over. Um, that would you know, be able to dedicate our athletic director to what, what, what is Holy Cross sports and only Holy Cross sports. So um, that we're trying to do as well. Uh, also want to rebrand high school sports logo. We've already done that. Um, I'll show it to you at the end of this slideshow or a version of it. Um, the lower school will continue to use the logo that we've had with the Crusader holding the sword for the foreseeable future anyways until we decide what we want to do with the lower school. All right, so we want to develop some new sports teams. That's important. We're a small school, so we want to start with the small teams first. It's really hard to field a team of 35 football players when you only have 48 um, kids in the high school. So that's not going to happen for a little while, but as time goes on, we will. So developing things like beach volleyball and cross country will help us get in the FHSA faster. Um, we want to demolish that pool because it doesn't do us any good to be there. It's just a wading pool with you know a few feet deep, and it's not something we can practice. We're out of swim team practice, and so we're going to go ahead and demolish that pool in the very near future. And uh, that way we stop having to clean it, and, and it's a liability as well. 
So in its place, you want to build a covered sports pavilion. Um, I'll show you a picture in a second, but it'll have an undercover eating area that we can get kids out of the weather if we need them to eat outside still. Um, have some basketball courts on it, six nets, full court basketball, two half courts. Um, they can practice volleyball in there because the ceiling will be high and, and we could also use it as a cover play area for the younger kids if we wanted to. So it would give us a lot more use if we had a covered uh, sports pavilion there and it would allow us some relief from the auditorium practicing uh, volleyball and basketball and their other sports. So um, that's a real game changer for the school and hopefully that's something we'll be able to build relatively quickly. Um, here's a picture of what it could look like. Um, you can see it has you know full court and two half courts um, on it, so that would be the way to, to do this. Ultimately, though, we're going to have to look into the future, and, and within a, within five years, I, I believe it's absolutely essential that we build a gym for the school. Um, this is what it could look like. Uh, it would be over, and I'll show you a schematic of where it would be sitting and on our campus in a second, but this is something we need to do. Um, and we need to do it as, as fast as we can because this will legitimize all sports at Holy Cross, but will also give us a tremendous uh, tool for the future. And it creates a school, you know, and I title this How Jim Creates a School because a lot of people will say, well, you're talking a lot about athletics, but what happens is when we build a gym is that we, we do fine arts a huge benefit because we, we're going to then hand over the auditorium to them alone and it will be the fine arts building. And so when you have a fine arts building now, you will be able to fix the sound. You can put some classrooms back where the locker rooms are. You can knock out some walls on the interior and, and remodel the space to make an actual theater with a box office. There's a room upstairs we can use as a band room. It would be an amazing addition to the school. So when we build a gym, we actually get two buildings um, out of building a gym. We get one for athletics and basketball and, and volleyball, but you also get a fine arts building that can be specifically outfitted for fine arts and the development of our fine arts students and artwork and and it just be an amazing space for them. The gym, as I said earlier, will also be a recruiting and retention tool. That means that kids will want to come here. Students are going to stay where there's a strong school spirit. Students will enroll where there's opportunity for them to play sports and to do the things that they want or to get into fine arts um, and legitimate spaces. Um, Parents love to give to programs that are really great and, and are specific to their kids. So fine arts and, and athletics will get a great boost in, in parent um, input and parent resources. That's amazing too. Um, the gym, it, we, we've got to get a gym. We've got to have a gym. We've got to get the buy-in for the gym. We have to get as many people to give for the gym as we can find because I think it's going to be in a, a key to the growth success and the in the future of Holy Cross Lutheran Academy. This is just a, an architect's rendition of um, the campus. Before I got here this was made, but it's not as realistic as I would like it to be because I'm not sure we could wedge all that in here. Um, there's uh, another option we have here, but this could be something like um, what we could do here, of course, without that pool there in the sports pavilion um, long ways against the building. But I have a, an idea, and, and I just run this by, not that it's going to happen or it's even doable, but this is what I thought when I came on this campus. Um, and I want to share it with you because it is something that we're considering and something that we're going to pursue um, seeing if it would work, and we do not know yet. So, But think of it this way. What if we only had one school? Instead of two campuses, we had one. And we brought the elementary school over to this campus, and we had all the resources of, of a school here that uh, everybody could enjoy. And I'll show you a, a very rough schematic that I made, but this is what it could be like. So it's not much different than the, the schematic you saw earlier. It just has a couple of different things here. Um, in, a, in my schematic, everything everybody comes in. We build a parking lot um, in the front of the school where the sign is. That would hold about 140 spots, plus we'd have this parking lot. Fine Arts, of course, is going to be the building up in the front of the campus. This, The current Fine Arts building is here. Eventually, over time, if we were, we're going to have to get rid of that building and put a new one, but that could be our middle school building. Um, and then the big building where my office is, of course, the main building on campus could be the high school building. That would be this one. This is the cover pavilion I showed you a picture of. 
that would have a covered walkway from here to there. And then of course the covered pavilion would be attached here in some way to the gym. So you would be able to get into the gym here too, or walk a sidewalk around to the front of the gym. This is the football and soccer field. So this is the beautiful camp lake area or park like area in the middle of our campus. Then the only addition that I have really is the elementary building. We could build a large modern elementary building here with all the amenities for students um, if they would allow us to build it because Aero Lane is here. Um, we could put an attached playground to the front or to the back side of it. Um, all the children would have access to the sports field from everywhere, right? And we would have the leverage of our high school and middle school to do um, sort of cross-curricular stuff with the elementary school and play with them and read to them and all of that. So this is a one campus initiative um, and this is something to think about for the future because it could really help to make the school um, make it one school but also bring everybody together in a way where kids could always be coming to this campus and, and, and moving through elementary school all the way preschool really all the way up through high school here and enjoying the, the benefit of being able to use the sports field and the fine arts building and the gymnasium so that is one of the plans that is um, that we're considering and uh, we hope that you take a look at it and give us some feedback on what you think and we'll communicate much much more in the future about what this may or may not look like so I finish up with some questions on my you know my actual uh, speech of uh, with this PowerPoint um, on the 29th but this is a rendition of our logo it's not the final version I do have that one um, it's exactly this without the HC in the middle and the Holy Cross underneath is, is still on it but um, if you have any questions you can email me at mcorey at thcla.org and um, I'll be happy to field your questions about this but I thank you for taking time to look at this I hope that was helpful and um, I look forward to a great rest, uh, rest of the year with you guys and uh, the entire future with Holy Cross. So thanks again for watching it.